Hello, Hard Video Audience. Stuff. Welcome back. Today, for you guys, I'm going to show you how I filmed the music video for Amy J covering Sam Smith's Too Good at Goodbyes because I like sharing and I like you guys. Amy J is someone who has a great voice and when she covers a song, she really does it justice. So obviously I'll link the video in the description below and be sure to watch it because obviously these videos go hand in hand. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So on the day of shooting on this occasion, we had an incredibly short amount of time to spend filming. Amy J, she's a busy gal. So everything you see in the video was filmed in one Hour. This was crazy and there was a lot that I wanted to do and didn't have time to do. Every single shot is a first take. Usually I prefer to do multiples so that I can go through and pick the best bits from each. But there were five main singing shots and I'll go through them now and show you what I did. This first shot was a simple walk and follow type shot where I'm having to make on the fly adjustments to the focus, which actually in this case was exceedingly difficult, but still I think it looks good. We then switched locations and did a similar style shot just to give some more variety. We then did a three quarter style shot just to give a backup to the main walking shots. The sun then came out, so we headed back to the first location and got another shot further along the canal. We then did a final take with Amy's back to the sun because I love that sort of backlit look. All of those main shots were actually handheld, and the reason I did that is because, one, for speed, and secondly, because I actually wanted that kind of natural movement that you get with a handheld shot. I also made sure to get plenty of B-roll whilst I was there. You can't have too much B-roll, that's a really, really good thing to keep in the back of your mind. The main lens I used is not a stabilised lens, so I really was relying quite heavily on the in-body image stabilisation built into my Sony a7S II just to keep things steady. On the subject of lenses, I actually shot this whole video on just two prime lenses, so no zooms in sight. The first one and the main one was a Samyang, or Rockinon, depending on where you're from, 35mm f1.4, and the other lens was actually a Sigma 105 macro f2.8. I did bring other lenses with me, but at the time, those two felt right, just because I really wanted lenses that could give me lots of that sort of shallow depth of field, blurred background kind of look. Of course, shooting outside in bright daylight with these lenses that have big wide open apertures really means that it would require some form of ND filter. Otherwise, you'll be way overexposing a shot and that wouldn't be good. So this was a great opportunity to try out my new Genus Tech variable ND slash polarizer two in one thing. And don't worry, I'll be doing a separate video on this, so tune in for that. Needless to say, I was impressed. You can also expect to see a video on the Sigma 105 Macro, which is new to me, because there's a lot to talk about when using it to film video. Right, because I know you're interested, my camera settings on my A7S II on the day were as follows. I shot it in SLog2 because it was quite bright. I wanted to have some decent dynamic range. I also only used the native ISO of 1600, obviously. You, you kind of should always use the native if you can. The 35mm f1.4 I shot really shallow at, I think, somewhere around f2. And the Sigma 105 Macro f2.8 I left at f2.8. The day started off overcast but fairly bright, and then gradually the sun burned through the clouds and it got really, really bright, so obviously I had to make some exposure adjustments, and I did that with my Fader ND. In terms of colouring the footage when I got home, here is the chain of plugins that I used in this project. The first plugin in the chain is, of course, one of my new favourite plugins from FCPFX, White Balance 2, and I love it. I then applied an instance of Colour Finale in which I used the Curves colour wheels and LUT modules, and I use my favourite LUT at the moment, Velicor Aspen. Then to finish off, I just applied a very, very subtle vignette. And when we look at the effects on and off, you can see quite a nice transformation. It's also worth noting, I didn't use any sharpening in camera or in editing. I just wanted it to look as natural as possible. And that's pretty much it for today. I really hope you found that interesting and helpful. And it's been a pleasure as always for me. I, you know, I always make love making these videos for you. And um, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Take care.